hopefully it's recording. So welcome to my talk, which will be about Fedora Swag. Does everyone know what it stands for? Swag, the stuff we all get. And see, uh, promotional materials uh, we give away at conferences or uh, users, contributors, etc. Et I had a similar talk at the last year's uh, vlog where we discussed a couple of ideas. Uh, so this talk will be a lot uh, about the, uh, the progress we've, we've made and if we managed to execute one of the uh, ideas we had last year. So last year the, the subtitle was let's make Fedora socks. So this year have we finally made Fedora socks. And we indeed have, because I wa I have one of those thing. At, at least for Fatcon APEC, they they produce Fedora socks. So if you don't have them, then you know, go to Fatcon APEC. They usually do. Come so when it's just unfair. You have to say that uh, we are that and normally no socks, and we went bowling, and there are socks needed. So. <laughs> <laughs> It made sense to give everybody some socks. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, so yeah, my, na my name is Iri Hirschman. I, I work for <coughs> the desktop team in Red Hat, but in Fedora, I'm uh, besides, like, for example, Fedora Packager, I'm mainly a Fedora ambassador. I'm still heavily involved in uh, production of swag for, for EMEA. So I'd like to start uh, with the the strategy. That's also one of the topics I discussed last year. Because before <coughs> before we had any kind of strategy, it was very uh, chaotic thing. I would say we always got together and, and everyone had some great idea about some swag. It was like, yeah, I, s I, I saw like I don't know, Debian socks at at Fosdem, and we have to have those as well, etc. Et so, well, you know, to us who uh, uh, are in charge of production, you know, we were pretty much overwhelmed by ideas, you know, what we are, should produce without really any, any like, reasoning if uh, it has any, any marketing I impact, if it does any job, you know, to promote Fedora, etc. So, fortunately, uh, Last year, Fedora as a whole got some, let's say, uh, structure in, in strategy. So we now n know better our target audience. Uh, they're usually like, let's say, short-term goals for that particular year, or let's say two years. And it actually helped us to uh, make the, the swag production to be uh, more targeted uh, so we know better what to focus on. So for example, this year the target uh, were uh, Python developers. So we produced a lot of, lot of uh, Python related swag that we can use at, uh, at conferences. I'm going to talk, uh, talk about it a bit later. So it was definitely helpful and it, that's improved quite a lot since since the last year. So, so we've moved, it's not ideal, but it would have moved at least a bit from, you know, the, the chaotic way, like I've got an idea and it's cool and we need to produce it and let's do it, to something like, yeah, we've got this target audience we want to attack this year, so what what could actually uh, attack them to Fedora, what could make the, uh, the, the marketing or promotional job so speaking of target audiences, this is also stuff I, I talked about last year, but I think it's it's quite important to realize that we don't only have uh, one one group of uh, people that we target with uh, with uh, the swag and our marketing in uh, in general, but actually we've got different kinds of quite different kinds of uh, target audiences. So one of them is current users. So those are people that are already using Fedora. So like our marketing goal should be, you know, to keep those people uh, around Fedora, uh, <coughs> like keep, you know, let them, like keep them using Fedora. And ideally, 
make them more involved. And those people usually have already some, sometimes even, even emotional relationship with Fedora and it's, they want to express it. So for you know, such a target audience, uh, you know, stuff, you know, that can, sh uh, which through they can show their affiliation with the band is ideal. So it's all those like Fedora branded swag, like t-shirts, hoodies, et and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, mainly the users. Then a uh, sort of subset of this group are contributors. Uh, we often forget about them. So, yeah, so we produce t-shirts and whatever, and it's all targeted at like users to get more people attracted to Fedora, but we forget that we've got, uh, as Matthew said in the morning, we've got up to 4,000 uh, more or less contributors to Fedora and a lot of them are doing a great job in their spare time uh, at evenings and sometimes it makes miracles you know to just give the uh, show them that you know the project really appreciate their work or the community appreciates their work so uh, I'm gonna talk about it a bit later as well but uh, the experience it, experiences with this and it's also one thing we shouldn't forget about that we also have people that are a lot invo involved in Fedora. We don't really have to convince them that Fedora is great, but we should also don't forget about them with swag. Uh, and then the, uh, the last group, which is really the, the one that is m the most emphasized when you are doing marketing, and uh, since you know swag is part of the marketing. It's the potential users, so pe people that don't, uh, sometimes they don't even have a clue what Fedora is. Uh, sometimes it's people that know a little about Fedora and you need to uh, like convince them or attack them to uh, Fedora. Uh, those people, they are usually not like the swag that, you know, it's just about branding. You have a, like a sticker without any information, just the logo, and you give them the sticker. It's usually, you know, just you know, piece of paper for them, because it. Uh, so those for these people, like the ideal swag is something where they can at least learn a bit more about the project or some incentive, you know, to look look into that. So we, they go to our booth at some conference and they, you know, learn about Fedora, and you give them something like. Uh, so far, uh, DVD uh, have b uh, DVDs have been doing this uh, this job. They are going to uh, are gonna go away. I'm gonna talk about it as well. Uh, so it's yeah, something like this. But if you if you produce just you know like buttons, stickers, whatever, in the the best scenario, they put it on uh, their laptop besides dozens of other stickers, and it does some little. Uh, Banding job recognition job for us, but <coughs> it's yeah not not the ideal thing. So uh, now I'm going to talk about the current situation. Uh, so we finally have uh, official merchandise store, the Red Hat Cool Stuff store. I I'm not sure if it's I checked it just recently today, and I actually didn't find any Fedora swag there. So I'm not sure if it's just a short-term uh, thing or it was it was a move there, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's been there since uh, last year. They offer like a couple of t-shirts, mugs, you know, what else is there? Maybe hoodie, uh, and it's it's really it's good for like our like as I spoke about current users, people. Have, who want to show the affiliation with, with, with Fedora. And they usually don't have a problem to pay for things. Uh, they go to other booth at conferences and they like beg for stuff like, see, yeah, Debian guys, they have a hoodie and I'd love to have a Fedora hoodie and, uh, and just you know shut up and take my money and give me the, the, the hoodie. But the thing is that the problem with, with this is that Fedora doesn't have a legal entity. Uh, Red Hat is not really interested in selling uh, uh, merchandise, so we th there is there is no legal uh, way uh, to do it right now. Or well, there was interest, but it died mostly because there was 
no ideas what to sell there. There was several, okay, now get, get us the ideas, but show us them. And for the US, EMEA has an urge. Uh, so there was some interest, but. Yeah, but what, what they do wanna do it through the the third parties now, like right? the cool stuff. I had cool stuff stories also run by like a third party company, Unix stickers. It's called Unix stickers, but currently they also uh, sell a Fedora T-shirt, and they they wanna expand the the offering with hoodies and stuff like that. And <coughs> actually, the, the uh, like a cooperation with Unix stickers is like. Pretty good. Like I think everyone got uh, a sheet of uh, Unix stickers, uh, like Fedora stickers from Unix stickers uh, uh, in the morning. So they they support Fedora with some face work thing, uh, and they are really really helpful. They do like discounts to Fedora users, uh, uh, whatever. So I think this is probably more viable thing instead of starting up the whole business where you need to uh, have uh, like an online store, then you need to do all the procurement and payments and stuff like that wo worldwide. It gets really complicated. It's just better to do it in cooperation with, you know, uh, Linux friendly uh, vendors like Unix stickers. So it's definitely, it's an improvement since the last year when we didn't have anything like that. Do you think it will be possible at some point to use those companies to actually sell goodies and select them conferences? So like, I don't know right now how it would work, but basically they ship us a package, we sell what we could, then we ship it back or we keep it for next conference, and then we like basically- Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a tricky thing because usually, like for example, if you go to FOSDEM, you should have a, some kind of license to do business there. I mean, it's, yeah, you can just put the t-shirts on the table, you collect money, then you send it to your next stickers, it's done. Once, you know, there is, there is uh, you know, some uh, guys from financial, uh, uh, like, tax collector comes, then it becomes, it's, it's simply, it's not legal, I think, this way. Well, most likely it's doable, Unless you know someone uh, shows up to to check or the, the legality of those shops there, and do it uh, like a legal way, I think it would be just like too, really too complicated. Who can I get pages online to to Unix stickers and just distribute the thing? So the somebody would approach you who say, "I want to grant it Unix stickers the right online, to sell." Uh, who, who gave it to them? I think yeah. uh, it because can't. they produce and they make a an, an profit with with uh, they uh, have the they have the alert. Yeah, they ha they they got it from the council, and the the, 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 the deal is and that do, do you know we are not gonna you get know? money from them, but we are gonna get uh, we are, or we are already getting uh, face swag from them. So from time to time, uh, they just se send us stickers and stuff like that. That we on ambassadors can use. Yeah, so that's I was I was not really involved in that deal, so I don't know so any. Uh, so why it was forbidden for for the the EMEA area five years ago? We we had one one yeah. producer who was in, in in my house and and said I will produce under the uh, hood of Fedora, uh, the hood of Red Hat, and we also talked to to Ruth that time because of the legal issues. And we don't get any permission to do anything. We had uh, we had the vent potential vendor from Hungary as well, uh, to, who produces stuff uh, Debian and other projects, and they di also didn't get through. So I don't have the answer. I, I hit the same uh, block as, as you did. Personally, we in, in in Europe, at least me, are more or less pissed off because of this behavior that it's now possible to do things which we came up five years, six years, ten yeah. years ago. That time we also uh, founded uh, an MPO to do such things which was also uh, pissed off by Red Hat because of legal issues and now it's possible to do. Yeah, I think 
it has a lot to do with stuff that Unix stickers is US based. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> and you have to go to US and you need to write Yeah, that's that's the that's the answer. But I, I uh, Unix stickers booth at the conference in US and you need Ruth and then you get the other one. I I can't really do much about it. When you, say, when you say we get some stickers, no, not, not we, uh, the North American ambassadors get some stickers. Yeah. We have still to pay it from our budget. Which yeah, from, from a <coughs> simple point of view, I see, see it as, as an improvement, uh, at least for the users, that they can at least finally have some uh, option. Yeah, but, but it's quite unfair. I mean, they have three times that much budget anyway, you know, as uh, e.g. a pack in the thumb has. So, and to be honest, if, if you pay from the budget the fat and uh, a little bit of swag, I, I mean, it's, it's a pack is uh, two third of the people of, of the world live there, so we need some, some DVD more as uh, the North Americans. Uh, so if we buy this, so all budget is gone. <coughs> and they have three times that much and, and, and still getting that kind of deals. That's unfair. Yeah. That's, uh, that's not, that's really, you know, then really a uh, third class for the way. Yeah, like we, we agree on, on I this. I think so. we can change it in this yeah. room. Are we agree on this? Sure. I'm not sure if we can do anything about it, but. Yeah, but we can communicate it very openly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> last last year I had, some, I had some pictures of what we are producing. I don't want to go through it again. Just you know, we we are still producing the basic stuff like stickers with Fedora logo and Fed, uh, logos of Fedora editions, case badges you can put on like replace the Windows uh, logo, Windows inside logo or whatever. We also have the produce the tiny stickers that you can put on the Windows keyboard to replace the Windows logo and we don't produce spins <coughs> no more it's, ba it's basically because it was always uh, always produced by uh, Christoph in Germany and uh, I d we don't have any connection to that vendor and so there, there is no particular like other reason behind that then we produce buttons, pens we don't produce mics anymore uh, also, again, it's not that we would really be against that, but basically, uh, it's also a problem with Max, you know, to ship them. They are quite heavy and they can break also uh, quite often. So, yeah, in, like instead of one mark, you can ship like a hundred stickers. So it's question what's uh, more valuable. Well, that's the basic stuff. Yeah, d DVDs, that's always a, a, a topic and uh, last couple of years, so uh, currently we are producing uh, for Fedora 24. We produced 1,000 uh, DVDs of uh, Fedora Workstation for EMEA. In uh, at the peak, we produced 5,000, and the peak was just a couple of years ago. Like so, like <coughs> Fedora 18, 19, we produced 5,000. So since then, it's gone down to 1,000, and I think it's. We cannot really produce less because uh, those DVDs are uh, pressed, and it uh, it's ve you know uh, the most of the cost is fixed you know to set up the machines and stuff like that and uh, and the more then you produce the the cheaper per uh, unit it is and it doesn't uh, uh, make any economical uh, sense to uh, produce less than one thousand. So for the for yeah. Just excuse me. Do you have the, the whole numbers of uh, DVDs global, or is it just uh, EMEA? Uh, this is just EMEA. I like okay, and, and EMEA is probably the I only region where. The numbers of a bank, yeah. uh, actually, uh, I I would go back to the blender we had once produced together with EMEA, but uh, uh, that was like one hundred problem for our packets, they are very patriotic with their, with their countries always, you know? They want to produce this locally. So right now the DVD is all produced in India. They have really researched that long as they came under the price from EMEA, but now we have gold DVD with an ugly sleeve. Uh, this time it is even fair printed. So from my perspective, I would go back to, 
could, producing them with Amir again. As I said, we cannot produce enough DVD, but we produce this one 1,500. So 3,000 a year is what we produce in a bag. For 3,000, so South one DVD City. was two euros, or huh? one, one DVD was two euros, or? Uh, no, it's cheaper than in Rea, but it's uh, so burn. so okay. a third of the DVD. I, I really see it because I had a lot of personal and people come back to me and speak to me, oh, the DVD didn't work. So, um, but it's cheaper, you know, so it's... Uh, yeah, but for for uh, EMEA we will probably this. Uh, the plan right now is to this to produce another thousand for Fedora ten to five, and then we will probably discontinue it because the the de demand is really low, and I don't I don't really see any new computers coming with with DVDs, and they were like this time I uh, uh, I produce them pretty late because. It, Pretty much no, no one cared, no one asked for them. And at some point it was like, wow, we, we just released Fedora 24 and no one has started working on uh, DVDs because you need uh, like artwork, then you need to do, uh, uh, the get the quotes from the vendor and stuff like that. And so we produced them pretty late and pretty much no one really complained. So like it's a bit of a sign that mm, no, uh, they are not really in high demand anymore. And it's, it's a technology of the past, so at some point, and the point was right now set after Fedora 25, uh, and we will discontinue that. So let me, uh, I can accept what, what we do with the other areas uh, where we have uh, bandwidth, like, like... DVD and SWAG is handled locally by the regions, so uh, that means it is the, the I agree. position is just for them. Zirko, I agree, but, but what to do with the countries with a low bandwidth? Of internet, yeah. like like Africa, Africa. or uh, Latam. I have no idea about Latam. Yeah, yeah. But right. yeah, yeah I they don't have. They, they, they do their they do their decision by themselves, but they do with their budget. As I said, we have our budget and we produce that amount. We, we would need more. Yes, a lot of uh, notebooks, laptops come not anymore with 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 a DVD drive, but it's very ho horrible to download a DVD in Cambodia. So it takes me several days. Yeah. Also, uh, to to Africa or Middle <coughs> East, it's from from EMEA or from like the European Union. It's extremely difficult to ship anything. Like it gets lost. Like when we send it, like you can send it with primary uh, services like DHL or uh, I don't know, UPS and so on, and then. I remember w once I didn't know the price upfront, and for shipping a package to Jordan, we paid fifteen hundred dollars for that. It was just insane, and it, yeah, that, it was with DHL. That package was there in two days. <coughs> it was delivered without any problems with customs, yeah. but we just couldn't afford that. Was was the same? Remember, you did ship something to me that I can send it to Cambodia because yeah. it was cheaper to send it. From Germany to Cambodia, as from Czech Republic. Yeah, but it's 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 because it's because they, like in other countries, DHL doesn't really uh, provide like the standard mail services. Uh, uh, but when we use the standard mail services for countries like the Middle East or Africa, it really gets stuck at customs. Sometimes it disappears forever, and pe people like it's I don't. I suppose it must be a, a bribery or something because those people are asked for like a three times of the price of that package. Like they, the customs ask them for three hundred dollars, you know, just to get that package. So, really, it's. So we had one incident with a in Nigeria. They wanted to have for the package nine hundred dollars. Then he came to me. I, 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 I don't know. Then I went, Christopher, Christopher is doing it. Do you an idea that we went to Robin? And even Robin did, you know, what else can we send us? Send uh, a letter from Red Hat, and then Red Hat legal deal with that, so that we could add the DVDs. But he got it out two months after the event. So, <laughs> so it's, it. yeah, it also takes, takes time sometimes. So it, it, it gets there within a couple of days, and the, the, the customs keep it there 
for weeks and they tell them, okay, pay us $300 and you have it immediately or, or wait. So uh, w what I wanted to say is uh, even though those countries may still need the EVDs, you know, the, the, like, the standard uh, production and shipping we have for ambassadors doesn't really work because it takes time, it gets lost, or it gets stuck at the customs. So probably like the free media service is better for them. If, if they need the DVD of Fedora, someone can burn it for them and send it as a simple package that you know they, the customs don't really care about much. But any, anyway, uh, also people ask a lot about USB drives. Unfortunately, I don't still see them as a viable replacement because of the price. Right. I repeat it every year, like that uh, the capacity goes up, but the minimal price stays the same. So we'll, for the same price a uh, couple of years ago, when you could get like one gigabyte, now you can get uh, four gigabytes and, and so on. But we, we'd love to have, for example, two gigs uh, USB drive that is really cheap, for example, for $1. And that would be just enough for us, but the thing is that, that the price is still like, I don't know, at least two, three, four dollars. And that's just the price. Then, uh, the, then the reliability, usually, if, if you buy the uh, cheap USB drives, usually easily like one, of, uh, one out of four uh, or five is uh, bad, like broken. So it's not very reliable uh, either. And another thing is, uh, it's really difficult to load uh, stuff on that in large scale. Like I, I can't even imagine loading a uh, Fedora on 1000 uh, USBs. Like you can, you can, you, also, you can send them blank uh, USBs and tell them load Fedora <laughs> on it yourself. But even like when I when I prepared some trainings with Fedora and the, the, I prepared like 30, for example 25, 30 USB drives uh, the tube ones are really slow, and it took me a whole day to 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 get it done. Yes. Just a funny thing in SUSE, they distribute the flash drives throughout the company, like we would do in Brno and Red Hat. Everybody gets a couple flash drives, and after a few days, they collect them back, <laughs> and they expect people to upload them. So crowdsourcing. Okay, okay. <coughs> yeah, think about That's it. An idea. An idea, it could maybe a possibility to yeah, produce USB drives and the, the slave of the USB thing, the, the, the ribbon or whatever it is Mini outside, USB can be uh, branded with Fedora yeah. as possible. Do you mean USB keys? There is, no, there is the one thing, thing which is small as the USB uh, stick, stick, which has no, but it stores enough data to the URL. But we did the research, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even that, that thing branded yeah. as, as Fedora and then just produce four gig parts, buy 20,000 and sell them. Or send them away and tell the, tell the people, load it by yourself and run the USB. Yeah, but that the problem is still the price. Like, you. It's, yeah, it's, it's like. F f like, the DVDs we produce now, the, the best ones are. <coughs> Uh, 35 cents, uh, US, uh, US dollar cents, while uh, the, the, the it's uh, still like 10 times as much. With 1,000 you have to say. It's for yeah, with, with 1,000. 5,000 it's, uh, it's much cheaper. Yeah, yeah, it's much cheaper. It's like 25 US cents or even even less. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing. But what we've been play, uh, uh, experimenting with in the, the Czech community is uh, like a user handbook. Last year, I, I had just a couple of like uh, mockups of the the front page and some idea what should be in, uh, included and stuff like that. This year, like I already have it, so I can but it's a quite down. It's it's in uh, uh, Czech because it was written uh, uh, Czech by Czech contributor. So and we. Uh, use that as a, as a pilot. We uh, use that at a couple of conferences. We gave it away at uh, universities, high schools, and stuff like that. And the, the, I think the, the experience with that is, is pretty positive. 
so it can partly replace uh, the DVDs as you know an, an incentive to learn more about Fedora and uh, try it out. It doesn't it doesn't really have uh, the Fedora itself in it, right? But it, it it should work the user from you know attending for example like or meeting someone from the community or attending other booths to an installed system and getting familiar with the system. So it explains him uh, or her the, the values of Fedora or what Fedora is about, where to get it, how to get it on a USB drive, how to install it, how to how uh, the desktop works, how to install applications, the basic stuff. Uh, we are now currently working on the second edition. It's already been translated to English and now it waits for typesetting and painting. I was hoping to have uh, the English ver version here to uh, also for you to review. Uh, the problem is it, uh, it hasn't had any kind of like project manager who, who would be, you know, uh, kicking people around, you know, to finish the translations, finish the proofreading and stuff like that, typesetting. But it finally, the original guy who wrote it in Czech is now working on the, the English version to make it ready for painting. So hopefully in a couple of months we will have it in, in English as well. Then we will see if it, we, we, we also thought about uh, the translations, how to easily translate to other languages. And actually we ended up you know, translating the, the files directly because it, it's written, the sources are written in ASCII docs, uh, stored in, in GitHub repo, and it's like very easy for the translator to just, because it doesn't change that often. We plan to release a, a new version like every year, so it's not like it, it would change like every week or a month. So uh, properly like, we came up with the, the, the conclusion that you know translating the ASCII doc files directly is probably the best way to go uh, instead of like hooking up it to like system like Zanata. Even though if someone has an experience with that and wanna help with that and fi finds it better, we don't have a problem with that. But we've got zero, zero experience with the translation systems mm -hmm. and we found this uh, uh, good enough. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, the audience for this really the potential users. The, uh, the, the handbook doesn't really have any new information for someone who's, who is already using Fedora. But it's a, it's a really nice introduction into Fedora. It's also written the way that it's not extremely uh, really specific, that it means well, it's written for Fedora 24 and when Fedora 25 is out, then it's outdated. It's written the way that it's fairly uh, generic and still still you are uh, helpful and useful so this this was written like a year ago and I think it's still not uh, like outdated it's still like usable not a lot of things are uh, have changed the oh yeah we, 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 we had a banner just before after we painted that, we had a dispute with the owner of Fedora.cz domain, so we had to move the, the community, check co Fedora community portal to moefedora.cz, which is like myfedora.cz, uh, just in Czech. And it was just after we painted the book with all the uh, uh, links to Fedora.cz, and, and it's a painted stuff, so it's not a digital stuff where you just you know, <laughs> change it yeah, in a second. So, but we already have a new batch that has more uh, Fedora that sees that, but it was, uh, yeah, bit bummer. <coughs> but yeah, just go on. Uh, as I spoke about the Python specific staff, uh, uh, swag, so it, we, this, I think it's all on this picture, like correct me if, you know, if there is anything missing. Uh, as I said at the beginning for this year, uh, like, Fedora uh, Python developers are the focus for us. So we had a pretty good presence at PyCon uh, US. And all, I think this, this, and this was produced for uh, PyCon US. But in, in EMEA, we reused the artworks. So we painted it and we used it two weeks ago at your Python, which is the biggest uh, Python conference in, in Europe. And it was also uh, pretty pretty successful. I've got 
uh, yeah, like a couple of like flyers if you wanna take a look. I think th those flyers are pretty well done. And that's also one of the things uh, I wanted to see last year. Like we had a last year, we had a lot of swag that was really just about branding, having you know uh, containing only the uh, the federal logo. Doesn't uh, uh, we didn't contain any any more information. At best, maybe a link to getfedera.org. And I think this for someone who wants to get uh, you know. Or learn more about Fedora. You know, getting something like this at the booth is, uh, you know, still better than you know giving him uh, just a plain Fedora logo sticker. Because yeah, like even if he goes through it in five minutes and then th he throws it away, I, th I I would call it a success story because even in five minutes he can learn quite a lot from this about about Fedora. So that's that that's one of the examples. I I know there was a big discussion about flyers on ambassadors mailing list last year like some people don't <coughs> find it very eco-friendly printing flyers that you know usually end up in a bin but i still think it's it's a good incentive uh you can get at, at the booth and you know to uh, learn more about federal uh this leads me to uh, I call it better swag at conferences. I mentioned that uh, earlier uh, this talk. Like people, when we went to FOSDEM, people complained that yeah, we'd like we'd love to have the Fedora T-shirts, hoodies, etc. I also explained that there is a the reason why uh, we don't have them. We don't sell them. Anyway, like when I when I looked at the the total. Uh, cost of, for example, our presence at FOSDEM, like, I know the budget is, for example, 2,000 euros or dollars. And then I was like, well, if we produce 100 t-shirts, we give to users that are like, that, you know, have a good conversation with us and they seem to be pretty enthusiastic about Fedora, then it would be maybe like 10% of the, the total cost of the conference and it would make much definitely better impression and satisfy those users. So that's what we did at, at FOSDEM this year. We produced a hundred or around hundred Fedora, something like I am Fedora user. Proud user? Yeah, proud Fedora user uh, t-shirts. It was pretty successful. Yeah, we, in, we indeed uh, made uh, those people happy. Uh, what we we're thinking before that, like uh, we were trying to find a way how to give uh, those t-shirts away. Like, what should be the criteria? Of course, like if there is someone you meet there, like a for them, and he always asks about Fedora, and uh, he's a long-time user apparently, then you can give him the t-shirt right away. But. Uh, then you, you still should have some formal formal criteria for that. And Matthew Miller ca came up with an idea because for the big events we we make uh, the the Fedora badges for attending that that event. That you go to our booth, you can scan <coughs> the QR code and get the badge. So we were like, hey, we can actually make people or ask them to s uh, get the badge. First, like, yeah, uh, the, all uh, people who are already users and have fast accounts, then for them it's easier, easy, and then they can get the T-shirt, and it can make uh, other people to create the account. And actually, then we can we can see what people created a fast account at FOSDEM 2016, and later we can track if any of them actually continued. Uh, somehow contributing to, to Fedora. And then we can actually get some feedback if you know something like this, giving away t-shirts, makes any impact or not. I think someone did a pretty thorough. So I did uh, analysis using the FOSDEM yeah. flag, so it was pretty useful. Yeah, so I think you, 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 uh, uh, anyone else can read it on, on your blog, right? So we did the same for EuroPython. We don't we don't really have any data for that uh, yet. The, pro the the major problem with this is actually technical. 
that the uh, we uh, people have a lot of a lot uh, have a lot of problems uh, creating an account in Fedora account system. It uh, like it always like timed out or error out, and it was unavailable. Yeah. There is a major rewrite happening or rewrite next major release of FAS. They talked about it on the infrastructure talk. It's going to be FAS free. That should probably solve these issues. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the time frame. Hopefully, because we had that particular problem at FOSDEM, and then when I spoke to um, Michal Ciprian, who was at EuroPython at our booth, they had exactly the same problem. People were trying to register, you know, to get the FAS account and then to get the badge, and they just couldn't and couldn't, and some of them just gave up. So, this is uh, a major, major problem <coughs> with, with this. Yeah, so we've got j 10 minutes left, so, uh, yeah, what was, what's been also improvement is that now we've got uh, a Git repository with, with design assets, which so it, which how is that possible? Oh, that's maybe, if it, as long <laughs> as, as long as it's, it's available to at least some ambassadors, you know. No. No? no? Why? What's the problem? Uh, legal or? Yes. Okay. Uh, not just legal, it's. Uh, uh, let's say this uh, some ambassadors have the, a totally problem with creating swag. Um, there is one in the mail who has there a totally problem with that. It's totally problematic for him to buy the uh, ticket that he designed him and get what he wants. Uh, he tries to, to, to do everything different. And uh, he has spoken last year with me uh, on blog and got from me the way how he should do it, but he did not uh, sit down and accept that. He made offer that and take it in marketing, try to change that, and now comrades have taken that over without any thinking on, on everything. <coughs> And if you see, uh, there was, uh, I think, last week, yeah, last week or the week before, an uh, 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 article on, on community blog, how to get things out of the, of the uh, design team. Uh, but the problem is it works on for everything, because there are different methods. Uh, so uh, we discussed that uh, last week in, 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 in Boston, how we deal with it. And, uh, the problem is uh, Reddit doesn't want that the local gets out that kind. So, you know? okay. so it will be an internal uh, asset thing for just to design him and you have very well all if you request it. So, but that's on the end not a problem. Uh, it's not actually a, still an improvement because you know in the past when we so, someone had to recreate the artwork because for example one designer didn't know where you yeah, know well that. It's a, it's a, it's it's not just an entirely legal problem. I mean, I told already that uh, all the APAC DVDs are misproduced. Uh, it's also yeah, you cannot take an RGB picture and then print it. You know, yeah. it turns out black. So we have black DVDs now in APAC instead of blue. So it's a uh, purple. It's yeah, we had once purple. <laughs> once, yeah. It is. It is uh, you know, why not use the service of the professional, which is offered as a service? Uh, where is the problem of the ambassadors with that? Yeah. Why is it is it so hard to create a ticket and say uh, it, it is okay if you not have the knowledge, the technical knowledge? We will definitely also find help find you a vendor for that what you want to produce. Uh, but why is that a problem? Yeah, I mean, you know? yeah, fine. Uh, why I've every, got every ambassador we've got four minutes. And find it ready and use it and don't, don't know what yeah. it is, you know? Hey, I, I get you, I just have, uh, I've got four minutes <laughs> left and know, two more slides. Somebody, <laughs> more slides. somebody <laughs> made it, uh, a ticket in the design team and wanted powered by Fedora because and, and I say, what's that? And then it turned out, yeah, he needs the case batches. And I said, oh, you need the case batches. Yes, uh, 
I showed him, and then I gave him the PDF for the case batches, and I got case batches this size. <coughs> yeah. So yeah. But this, it's it's yeah, yeah, I understand, very, very I understand the, the idea. Uh, yeah, it's just I've got a couple of uh, like the, la the last thing that they would say that swag ideas of it should be better like a list of wishes. So the last one I'd like to realize in the future is yeah, it, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, we shouldn't forget about the, the, the current contributors. And uh, last time we produced something for them was say uh, 10 years of Fedora t-shirts, I think it was when Fedora 20 was released. Just before that we did the Scheidinger Scat uh, t-shirts, but since then, and it's been almost two years, nothing. And I, and I could, at that time I could see, you know, th what impact it could do, because a lot of people were, uh, like, uh, they liked it, they liked the t-shirts also, a lot of people didn't expect something like this, so it was like a nice surprise for them. It was like really uh, nice touch from the community. On the other hand, yeah, we we need someone who will just you know push this because you need you need some budget for that. You need some ideas, vendors. The problem was not the push. Yeah, from your side, is a lot of pushing, but we did not. Uh, for Fedora 21 or one year because I had simply no time to come up with something. And the problem was everybody accepted uh, or wanted uh, to have a blue one, like the Tenus one, again. Uh, and Fedora 21 was, was the uh, flavors thing. So uh, it, sometimes it takes a lot of time to think about what you can do. I mean, uh, Moriku uh, used the Fedora 19 one. Uh, so we had yeah. before it was easy. We had always a yeah, name which was was in it. So and yeah, I'm, I'm working with with Masha to she, to create like a, some generic Fedora contributor T-shirt with something that is timeless that can be produced. But and and it should be just for the contributors because it's not just about. Uh, I think it. it uh, the t-shirt or whatever it has you know twice the, the value if the only way to get it is by contributing to Fedora that you cannot buy it somewhere you cannot get it in some raffle at a conference and stuff like that so it can be simply like really just Fedora contributor a generic thing but the only way to get it is you know through some recognition based on your contributors to, to Fedora <coughs> and <coughs> yeah, that's it for me. We've got one minute, so if uh, if you have any other question, any anything you wanna discuss, if not, then that's the end. And thank you for your attention. Uh, so, at the uh, first event, you said that uh, people tried to register, but they didn't, and so only a few could get the badge. So, like, how few? Because uh, what I saw was there were about like 10 newcomers during like each year. Like, no. Ooh, it's, uh, I, I didn't really, I don't think I counted the people at yeah. FOSDEM and I definitely don't remember now how many couldn't register and gave up in the end. But it was certainly a problem, like a lot of people. I, but I don't know how many of them did register in the end after like five attempts or how many of them just gave up <laughs> because we we told them it was written on the table if you want a t-shirt show us uh, that you got the badge on your phone or whatever and uh, people took pictures of that and if maybe sometimes they didn't even come back and you know complain about it so it's hard to but it's it definitely uh, lowers the number of people that that get it so did you give the t-shirts to existing like, contributors also? Yeah, we gave it to some existing ones as well in the end. It's yeah, you just <coughs> have to catch, so yeah. Yeah. It would make no sense if uh, there is somebody who is actually contributor and you refuse yeah. to give him a t-shirt yeah. because he's a contributor. No, actually, <laughs> uh, the interesting thing which I saw was like every time on the hundred yeah. badges that collected, so I was thinking oh. like, was it related to the number of t-shirts? <laughs>
Sabe? 